the constitution of india says that there shall be a council of ministers with the prime minister at the head to aid and advise the president so we know that the president is the nominal or the ceremonial head and the real executive powers are held by the prime minister and his council of ministers this council of ministers consist of all the ministers who form the union executive but within the council of ministers there are several groups the cabinet consists of senior ministers who hold important portfolios like the home minister defense minister or the finance minister so the cabinet are the senior most or the most important set of ministers so these cabinet ministers which form the cabinet they take administrative decisions and the prime minister seeks their advice on important matters so the cabinet ministers meet regularly to decide and formulate the policies of the government so the cabinet ministers who form the cabinet ministers of state and deputy ministers together constitute the council of ministers so the council of ministers is the entire body of ministers and the cabinet is its most important part the cabinet formulates the policies of the government and takes the major administrative decisions so the power of the council of ministers is generally executed or taken by the cabinet that is why in today's video we'll be using the terms council of ministers and the cabinet interchangeably so first let us talk about the policy making function as we already said the cabinet collectively frames the external as well as the domestic policies for the country so india is a huge country and there is need for various different kinds of policies the cabinet has to take decisions regarding the formulation of policies that will deal with the defense of the country or protect the security of the country so these policies fall under external policies or foreign policies and the cabinet also has to make policies regarding health insurance or regarding rural housing these are policies that will affect the citizens of the country and therefore fall under the domestic policies with the examples that we just used there are several other of these policies that the cabinet has to formulate for example have you heard about the national health policy this policy is supposed to increase the health expenditure and provide universal health care to the citizens of the country or have you heard about the pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana whose objective is to make financial services accessible and affordable to the citizens of the country so through all these policies that the cabinet formulates the government of the country is run now after these policies have been formulated these have to be implemented they cannot just be kept as written laws or acts right so that is why we have the administrative functions of the council of ministers so the council of ministers are responsible for implementing the policies the executive which is the council of ministers has to execute the policies of the government so for the two policies that we've talked about in the last slide the ministry of health and family welfare takes care of the implementation of the health care policy similarly the ministry of finance takes care of the implementation of the pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana the council of ministers takes the advice and order of the cabinet to implement these policies they are implemented in accordance to the laws of the country and the executive maintains the law and order in the country now we know that the president appoints certain high dignitaries in the country for example we know that the president appoints the attorney general of india the comptroller and auditor general of india 
election commissioners, members of finance commission, the chief election commissioner, governor of a state, ambassadors and judges of the Supreme Court and High Court. But we also know that the powers of the president are formal or nominal powers. So, the president makes all the major appointments with the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. So, the Council of Ministers headed by the Prime Minister advises the president regarding the appointment of all of these posts. Now, let us come to the legislative functions of the Council of Ministers. Again, the president has nominal powers. So, as we know, the president has the power to summon and prorogue the parliament and to dissolve the Lok Sabha when the tenure of the Lok Sabha is over or when the ruling government in the Lok Sabha loses the majority support of the members of Lok Sabha. But again, these powers are formal powers. So, the cabinet advises the president regarding the summoning and proroguing of the houses of parliament as well as for dissolving the Lok Sabha. Do you know that after each general election, the president has to address a joint sitting of both houses of parliament. In this joint sitting, the president has to give a special address to the parliament. The content of this special address is prepared by the cabinet. Now, in India, we know that there is no separation of powers. So, the members of executive can also be members of the legislature. The ministers are both the leaders of the executive as well as the members of parliament. So, the ministers take full and active participation in the parliament. The ministers draft the bills and make the policies which will be presented in the parliament and if passed will become laws. So, the ministers take active part in the working of the parliament and they are responsible for introducing, explaining and defending the bills in the parliament. So, after a bill has been formulated, it is presented in the parliament where discussions and debates regarding the bill takes place. After the presentation of the bill and the debates, the bill is either approved or rejected. So, the ministers have to introduce, explain and defend the bill in the parliament. Do you remember what an ordinance is? An ordinance is any law that is promulgated by the president when the parliament is not in session. So, when the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha are not in session, the cabinet has the power to advise the president to approve a bill. So, the ordinances are promulgated by the president on the recommendation of the union cabinet. The union cabinet's recommendation is a must for an ordinance to be promulgated. This gives the president a lawmaking power when the parliament is not in session. So that when there is an urgent need of passing a law but the parliament is not in session, the union cabinet can recommend the president to promulgate an ordinance. The Epidemic Diseases Amendment Ordinance 2020 was passed in April 2020 as an amendment of the Epidemic Diseases Act 1897. The ordinance amends the act to include protection for healthcare personnel combating the epidemic disease and increases the power of the central government to prevent the spread of this disease. Along with this power, the cabinet also initiates all amendments to the constitution. Now, the constitution of India has been created more than 70 years back and many laws have lost touch with the reality of today. So, the ministers have the power to initiate an amendment to the constitution, to remove an outdated law or to make changes in a law. The cabinet also has the power to add a new law to the constitution. So, in this way, the cabinet is responsible for keeping the constitution up to date with the realities of today. Now, let us talk about the financial functions of the cabinet or the council of ministers. So, the cabinet monitors the income 
and expenditure of the government and is responsible for raising revenues. We know that the union executive is responsible for running the government of the country and it is the council of ministers itself who has to raise the money through revenues to run the government. Revenues are collected through different processes. One of them is collecting taxes. You must have seen your parents paying taxes regularly. This is one of the methods by which the council of ministers imposes taxes and collects revenue. In the cabinet, all the financial duties fall under the supervision of the finance minister and any finance related issue has to be approved by the cabinet. Other than this, the finance minister prepares and presents the annual budget. The annual budget is presented every year in the budget session where it gives the details of the revenues and expenditures of the ensuing year. And the finance minister prepares and presents that budget in the parliament. So Nirmala Sitaraman became the finance minister of India in 2019. We know that a money bill can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha. And we also know that the money bill can be introduced in the Lok Sabha only after the prior recommendation of the President. But it is also important for us to know that a money bill can be introduced in the Lok Sabha only by a minister. A non-minister who is also a member of parliament cannot introduce the money bill to the parliament. So basically it is the council of ministers who can introduce a money bill in the parliament. Now, can you answer this question? Who can introduce a money bill in the Lok Sabha? Is it the nominated members, the non-members of parliament, the ministers or the private members? Yes, it is the ministers who can introduce a money bill in the Lok Sabha. Are you aware of the happenings in Afghanistan in 2021? Afghanistan, being under the Taliban rule, suffered various administrative changes. Now that brought up a lot of questions in the international sphere, as well as for India. Now India had to decide what relations it would have with Afghanistan. India also has to think about what relations it would have with its neighbouring countries, such as Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal or Bhutan or what relations it would have with the other countries of the world. For example, what relations it would have with Russia, USA or the UK. So when we said that the cabinet formulates the policies of the government, the cabinet also formulates its foreign policy. So the cabinet forms the foreign policy of the nation. The cabinet also has to look into the preparation for the defense of the country by the organization and the modernization of the army, navy and the air force. So it has to find out suitable defense and nuclear policies as well. The cabinet also decides negotiations with foreign nations. There has to be treaties and agreements made between the countries to maintain the international relations. All these treaties and agreements are signed by the president only after being negotiated and approved by the cabinet. Now being the ceremonial head of the state, the president only has the nominal power of choosing who will be the agents or ambassadors of the country who would represent the country in other countries. In reality, the president is advised by the council of ministers, especially the cabinet, in deciding who the ambassadors will be. So in the appointing of the diplomatic agents, the president is advised by the cabinet. The cabinet plays an important role in the defense matters of the country. So the cabinet looks over the appointment of the chiefs of the army, air force and the navy. For example, in 2019, the Modi government announced a new post known as the Chief of Defence Staff, who would lead the army and also be the head of Department of Military Affairs. 
By now, we know what an emergency is. In India, we have three types of emergency. The national emergency, the emergency due to failure of constitutional machinery in a state and the financial emergency. Whenever an emergency occurs, the president has the power to declare an emergency. But he has to do so on the advice of the cabinet. So the president cannot proclaim a state of emergency without the written recommendation of the cabinet. So only with the written recommendation of the cabinet can the president declare a state of emergency. So the emergency is met by the president on the advice of the cabinet. When there is a failure of the constitutional machinery in a state, it is known as the President's Rule. In the President's Rule, the President as the representative of the executive seems to have a lot of powers in the state. But in reality, it is the Cabinet who exercises these powers in the name of the President. Now, as we have understood, the powers of the President that are mentioned in the Constitution are in reality mostly exercised by the Council of Ministers headed by the Prime Minister. Since the President is the formal head and the Prime Minister and his Council of Ministers is the real head of the country. So the Council of Ministers who have the Prime Minister at its head is responsible for running the government and maintaining the efficiency of the government of the country. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn by games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.